Hi. So um, today I watched this video, it was a TED Talk, by Emily Wapnick, and it was called Why Some of Us Don't Have One True Calling. Um, it's really good. I'll post the link below. Um, but it's a great, um, short and sweet, like all the TED Talks are. Um, kind of, uh, it, it talks about a lot of things that I have certainly had fears around. Like, so she starts off and she talks about how, you know, we're commonly asked, what do you want to be when you grow up? And, um, how many of us don't have one thing that we feel a calling toward. Um, and I know that's certainly true for me. I felt that I've had, um, that I get called to do so many different things. And I, I've been joking the past year about how my, um, my resume is just has this like wide range of of skills on it. Like I have to redo my resume a hundred percent for every job because I have so many different jobs that I will pull in and put on there or take out or skills or whole sections that I will take out or add in depending on the job that I'm applying for. And it's because I've often had two or three jobs at once. And so I'm typically not, you know, and even though I'll be on a career path, I'll have like this other side job that could lead to another career in a lot of ways. And so um, this TED Talk really talked about um, the term that she used was um, multi-potentialite. And um, she said, you know, some people call them polymath or scanners. I was, I was thinking in my head when I was listening to it that um, it also sounded a lot like divergent from um, the series, uh, if you've seen that series. But um, yeah, just being a multi-potentialite, having interest in so many different things and getting really excited about one thing, diving into it wholeheartedly, and then getting bored. And that's how I am. I've never, I've never had this one thing that just continues. And like when I, you know, I, I don't know if I've talked about this at all, but um, I was on a career oriented path. My career path for 10 years was higher education. I was working in student affairs and, um, and that, that was my career path and I got burnt out and I, um, I left and I started working for nonprofits and, uh, that's what I'm doing now. Um, and I, you know, in, in, during that time, I've also worked with adults who have developmental disabilities. I've worked, um, in retail, I've worked, um, teaching in the outdoor, um, ed field. I've, um, I've gotten trained in, you know, life coaching and, um, other kind of train the trainer programs. And, um, let's see, gosh, what else have I, I mean, I've done all sorts of crazy things in the last, and I'm lots of other little things too, like, you know, painting offices and, you know, that's, like I said in a couple of videos ago, I'm doing some some of that right now to make extra money. But but in terms of careers, like there's been a lot of things I do on the side that also could lead to um, a variety of careers. And my jobs have also been all encompassing in the sense that I, I tend to take on jobs that I'm not just filling one role because I know that that bores me. So my last job, even though um, that organization saw event planning is a major skill in my resume. At the time, it was just a blip, um, but I, you know, enhanced it so that I could be more marketable because it was, in terms of when I say it was a blip, it was something that was so easy for me, but, you know, maybe only a tenth or so of what I actually did. I did a lot more leadership management, but then when I got hired and they saw that I could do a lot more than that, um, they brought me on full time and made me salaried and things like that. And so my point is just that like she was the speaker, Emily was talking a lot about how, um, multi-potentialites are great at beginnings because we're always starting new things. So we're really good at beginnings. And then, um, and so it never seems scary, like being in a new job or in a new position or having change is never really a scary thing, which is so true for me. Um, 
you know, even though right now I'm still trying to kind of make ends meet and figure out what my next steps are, um, you know, I've been here before in different ways and so it's not as scary. Um, and that also allows me to, you know, I'm stepping out of my comfort zone a lot more and I'm facing fears a lot more, um, because I've always kind of dived into new things and had a lot of, um, just, you know, just, it's, it's never been comfortable in some ways because I've always been kind of diving into new things. Higher education got comfortable for me for a while. And that's when I started underperforming. I started not being the kind of worker or, um, supervisor or leader that I wanted to be. And that's when I decided to leave. Um, and also she mentioned about how multi-potentialites, um, you know, have skills that are transferable ac- across disciplines because, you know, we're trying so many different things and we get so excited about the next new thing and learning a lot about it. Um, but we're never really starting from scratch because we always have things to pull, like things to pull from. And, um, we always have, um, we're resourceful in that way. And then, um, the last thing that I had, um, written down that she had mentioned was just talking about our adaptability, um, our ability to take on various roles because, um, because we get so excited about something and then, um, you know, dive into it, but then get excited about something else and dive into that. And it can be completely different from that other thing. Um, and she talks about like how, you know, when you're a kid and you, and you're asked, um, what do you want to be when you grow up? And, you know, you, typically it's, you know, the answer, you're looking for one answer. And, um, I think about, yeah, what if somebody had said to me, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I had said, I want to be a doctor. And they said, and what else? And what else? And what else? I think that would have really like reduced the stigma that I had to pick one thing and open up my world. And I might, I, cause I have felt shame around that. I remember, um, my last relationship, um, I was married and for seven years I felt like I was, he, he, you know, he was in a, he was an engineer and he was very much in a, um, his one path, his career path. And he knew what he wanted to do and he knew why and he loved it. Um, I think he also struggled in other ways with happiness around his, the field that he chose, but I always felt like I would dive into something, get really excited about it and then be bored a few months later and he would kind of give me crap for that, you know, kind of give me a hard time, like, oh, you know, are you sure you want to dive into this next thing? Are you sure you want to pay money for this next thing? Like, the really, um, the, the expensive personal growth workshop that I did, because I've done so many different over the last several years, but the most expensive one was the Byron Katie Tenney School for the Work, and I really had to, like, come to him and, like, justify it in a million ways, which I also am thankful for, because, you know, it allowed me to reflect more on why I want to do the workshop and what I would gain from it. At the same time, um, also feeling like guilty and shameful, like that I had to get the most out of it because he was like expecting that if we're paying this amount of money or I was paying the amount of money, then, you know, there had to be a certain outcome and there had to, I don't know, I guess, I guess I'm kind of getting off track, but I feel like in terms of, um, my interests, it's just, um, always changed so much. Like I will get re- like I re- recently was really, really excited again about learning Spanish. I've been recently really, really excited about learning another instrument and then other priorities or how I justify it is other priorities have gotten in the way. So, okay, well right now I can't really focus on, um, spending time, doing those two things because I really need to be making money. I need to have income producing activities during the time that I would otherwise be maybe learning Spanish or another instrument. And so it's really not in my best interest financially because I need to be able to pay my bills. And so I'm making those sacrifices. Um, and at the same time, who knows what, like diving into those things would also, what opportunity, opportunities those would afford me. Um, you know, but I, I just, it's hard to make those switches. Like you gotta, gotta pay the bills. So yeah, I have a lot of things rolling around in my head right now. Um, including how I can continue to be location independent, um, 
and how I can potentially also, um, you know, build a life where I'm not paying rent. Um, so I'd really like to, I think that's my next goal is to really find a way in which I can, um, you know, work for somebody who needs help around the house or to manage an Airbnb, um, where I would not be paying rent. So that's my next goal. Um, we'll see how it works out and, um, we'll see how I can get there. Um, okay. Anyway, I recommend that Ted talk. I'll post it below. Thanks for watching.